sweaty microphone hand. I'm sorry about that. All right, Kiefer, so the definition of rabbit hole is a bizarre, confusing, or nonsensical situation or environment, typically one which it is difficult to extricate oneself. Why is this the perfect title for your new show? Because things aren't what they seem. Uh, and I think we live in a world where discovering and identifying the truth is getting harder and harder. Uh, and people have a tendency to use this phrase when they, they get online and they go down information rabbit holes, uh, which is what we're intending uh, by our title. And, and what I've enjoyed about the show is that it, it really makes an audience kind of participate uh, because things aren't what they seem. And you have to really work to figure out who's lying, who's telling the truth, uh, who's good, who's bad. Um, and it's it's not a very clear path. And, and so all of those things kind of tend tend to make me think of a rabbit hole. Yeah, they certainly do. I mean, one of the things I wrote is this is a real like lean in audience show, like you gotta lean into this. What do you think people need to know about rabbit hole before they delve in? I don't think they need to know anything. I think they just have to kind of use their senses and and, uh, and if, some, if, if something doesn't seem uh, honest or trustworthy, then trust that instinct. If something doesn't seem right, trust that instinct as well. Uh -huh. You play Jonathan Weir. How would you describe him? Well, at the very beginning of the show, he, he, he works in the world of uh, financial espionage, um, which is actually a real thing. Uh, and, and he's conducting an operation where he's in charge and he's kind of he's the hunter the hunter sorry and and very quickly uh, the show turns on him and, and he becomes the hunted uh, and he's literally running for his life and trying to figure out who and why uh, is after him so the world is also set in um, data privacy mm -hmm. and how vulnerable we are or are not. How much of a concern is this for you and how did being a part of this uh, affect your behavior? Well, it, it hasn't affected my behavior because I'm, 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 I don't have email, I don't have a computer, and so I, yeah. I write my letters in longhand and, and I use my telephone as a phone. Um, so. I was actually quite grateful that, that, that I'm maybe not as vulnerable, not as exposed uh, as a lot of other people. Um, so it hasn't really changed my behavior, but it certainly was alarming to see the, the variety of ways that our private information can be either obtained and then manipulated. Absolutely. Um, it's so fascinating to me that it is so high tech, so much of what we're seeing in Rabbit Hole, but you do not shy away from the low tech mano a mano combat as well here. How great was that to have the combination in the show of high and low? I think one of the things that I've always loved about the thriller is that, that there is an element of physicality uh, to, the, to this production. I certainly had that experience with 24 uh, and I certainly had it here with Rabbit Hole. So it's an aspect of, of that genre that I enjoy a lot as a performer. Um, so it was nice to it was nice to get back into it a bit. Yeah, so I, I want to go back to the fact that you don't have a computer and you don't have a, a social media. So how do you so how do how does that work in 2023, Kiefer Sutherland? Well, I have some I, I do have some social media, but I work it through uh, someone who I work with. Um, but yeah, it's just I've, I've always I think I'm one of the last actors that still gets a script in paper because uh, I like to make my notes that way. Uh, it's just the way I've always worked, and then I've I've just kept doing it. That is fascinating to me. Was it something that you were concerned with in terms of privacy? And how do you think people will look at their own privacy when they watch this show? Um, well, I think they'll, they'll be concerned about uh, how exposed that they are. And, and to be honest with you, the reason why I didn't have a computer is I'm a horrible typist. So it was really something <laughs> as basic and simple as that. And now you just seem like you're ahead of the curve. Yes, that's a pretty, little bit. That's pretty impressive. Um, when you sat down, there's so many questions from episode one through, I've seen four episodes because I'm a lucky person. Um, so many things changed. What was your first response when you read that first episode? I, I loved it. Uh, John and Glenn are extraordinary writers. Bad Santa is one of my favorite <laughs> screenplays of all time, and they wrote that. Uh, they wrote a really layered, textured piece. Uh, you know, uh, John Weir is, is exceptionally intelligent, but he's also incredibly neurotic. He's got very, very uh, uh, low kind of self-esteem issues, and, and he's also got an understanding of sarcasm, and he's got great wit, and he's funny. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a complex character, uh, and, and that's not something that I take for granted. It's a, it's a rare thing, and they just put together a beautiful script.
just finally, people's expectations of television mm -hmm. have changed so mm -hmm. significantly um, in so many ways. How do you think Rabbit Hole responds to those expectations and, frankly, elevates them? Well, as it, Rabbit, I think, you know, television just in general uh, has been kind of continuously progressing uh, as a medium of storytelling. Uh, you know, it's, 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 in many cases it's easier to tell a story over eight or ten hours than it is over two hours. And so a lot of the films that I grew up watching, films like uh, Ordinary People or even films that I did like Stand By Me, the eight million dollar movie, movie studios don't really make those films anymore. They've been kind of adopted by television and so if those are the kinds of stories that you want to kind of partake in, television is now becoming uh, the venue for that. Yeah, It's so mm. exciting, it's so thrilling. Uh, thanks, thank it's you. a hell of a ride. I can't wait to get to number five. Well, thank you very much. Thanks Absolutely. for coming home. Thanks very much for having and me. And nice to see ya. Cheers. And you. Thank you very I much. I think you have a few people from the rest of the world Great. here to see you. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you. Delivery on 30? Yeah, sign in. Sure, you might hold on to that for me. Thanks. That is a ball. I have just armed it. Don't move. You move the bomb detonates. If I hear any alarms or sirens, I detonate the bomb. Understand? Good. I'll be right back. You need to know what you're getting into. This is not cops and robbers. The enemy is everywhere, but he can't be seen. So what's it gonna be? Are you going to be all heroic and difficult, or are you going to be sensible and help us save the world? Data drives everything. You think you're shopping for socks, but they know who you're voting for. Why me? I can trust you. You're the one who taught me not to trust anybody. Corporate espionage is the dirty way to get rich. Are you accusing me of something? You found something big enough to make you a target. It's just part of the job, right? No one's ever succeeded in toppling a democracy as ours. But a country rife with anger and division is a job already half done. This time there were just too many possibilities. I can't tell the difference between what's real and what's not. Well, you're really messing this one up, John. There's definitely something bigger going on here. What have you gotten me into? You must have absolute trust in one another and absolute trust in the plan. This is gonna hurt.